today we've got pretty groundbreaking news that Joseph R. Biden, the current president of the United States, the 46th president of the United States, is dropping out from his re-election campaign, but he will continue to serve as president of the United States until the end of his term on January 20th. Passing the torch to the Burns next generation of Democrats. Immoral, morally corrupt, bankrupt man. This comes after a terrible uh, debate performance, which then spurred on a whole host of questions about his ability to do the job, his ability to lead the country, but uh, largely about his ability to campaign within the Democratic Party. Um, I have not been private about the fact that I think compared to Donald Trump, obviously Joe Biden could uh, do better when it comes to most of the issues and if not all the issues certainly on the issues that i focus on around foreign policy joe biden has forgotten more about foreign policy than donald trump has ever known uh, Do uh, joe biden understands the basics of what makes nato tick what makes the alliance tick with the importance of the transatlantic relationship he is not randomly calling for the uh, the bombing of civilians on uh, whether if he just gets like heated in a particular rally He's not saying that the problem with what's going on at Gaza is that they're not bombing the Palestinians hard enough, which seems to be the standard within the Republican Party. Uh, there's a million reasons as to why I think Joe Biden, even if he's slower than he used to be, uh, could do a better job than Donald Trump. But the problem with running someone like Joe Biden, even if uh, it's just a problem with him campaigning well and he still has all of his decision-making faculties, which that has yet to be proved that he cannot make decisions, which is why he's staying president of the United States. Uh, he was able to coordinate aid to Ukraine. He was able to coordinate the bipartisan infrastructure bill. He was able to coordinate uh, the, uh, uh, the CHIPS Act. He was able to coordinate uh, the NATO summit. He was able to do a lot. So he can still make basic decisions, even Burns if he isn't is as fast an immoral, and he's not as intensive corrupt, in his work man. schedule as he used to be. So he's going to see out the rest of the term. But the problem is being president is also public speaking. And if he's mumbling and fumbling and messing up the names all the time while Trump's doing the same thing, but all of the attention is staying on Biden and his fitness when this election for Democrats to win needs to be on the lack of fitness of Donald Trump due to his felony convictions, due to the fact that he doesn't care that deeply about democracy, through him not accepting any uh, election result in his life if he is not the winner, from the fact that Donald Trump called for the suspension of the U.S. Constitution, Donald Trump calling for the bombing of civilians and wars, Donald I mean, there's a million ways you can challenge Donald Trump's credibility, uh, whether it, it comes to his personal behavior, his behavior as president, or his behavior outside of the office when it comes to uh, rejecting basic principles of uh, the American democratic system. For example, calling the secretary of state of Georgia and trying to get them to replace the votes, find the votes to make him win once he lost the election, the fake electors scheme, uh, him trying to hold hostage Ukraine aid unconstitutionally in order to try to get dirt about his political opponents. A curd is a curd. But the problem is, is you can't really make a big fuss about all of this as much as you want to if the entire conversation right now is whether Donald Trump, whether Joe Biden can even serve as president of the United States. If that's what the question is, if the question is whether or not Joe Biden can even be president of the United States for another four years, then instead of talking about Donald Trump's lack of fitness for the office, you're talking about Joe Biden's. Uh, something that's been lost in the conversation about whether Joe Biden is fit for president or not uh, is the fact that Americans don't think Donald Trump is fit for office or not. The majority of Americans don't think he's mentally fit or that he should serve another four years in office. And so instead of talking about that, we're talking about Joe Biden mixing up Zelensky's names with Putin, Kamala Harris's name with Donald Trump's. When Donald Trump is doing the exact same thing with Nikki Haley five, six times in a row, mixing up Nikki Haley's name with Nancy Pelosi, saying that Nikki Haley was in charge of capital security, during January 6th, she wasn't even in the city on January 6th. He forgot his own vice presidential nominee's name when he was endorsing him on the campaign trail. And that was years ago. That was like two or three years ago now. And it's been three years since then. Donald Trump's now 78. He, has old, he was as old as Biden was uh, when uh, Biden first ran for office. If Donald Trump was to serve another four years in office, he would be older than Biden is now. Donald Trump's fallen asleep at rally after rally, court appearance after court appearance, you can even see the dudes visibly slowing down as well as fumbling more. And so now the question is, 
if we're moving on to Kamala Harris, if we're moving on to Gretchen Whitmer, if we're moving on to Pete Buttigieg, if we're moving on to the Tooth Fairy, Santa Claus, The Rock, it doesn't matter. Whoever we're moving on to, they got to be older than the oldest nominee for president in history, Donald J. Trump. I don't know if you guys know that now, but Donald Trump was just chosen as the Republican nominee for president. He's 78 years old. Joe Biden, we haven't had the convention yet. He has not been chosen for the nominee for president. So even though Joe Biden is the oldest president in American history, he's not the oldest nominee for president in American history because he hasn't been chosen as the nominee yet. He was chosen in a nominee in 2020, but that's when he was like, I think 77. Donald Trump's now 78. Meaning since Do Joe Biden isn't going to be chosen as a nominee, that makes Donald Trump officially the oldest nominee for president in American history. And if that's the case, this age situation can be completely turned on its head. And so let's ask the question. If Joe Biden was too old to stay in the office uh, for another four years because there wasn't enough confidence in his ability to speak in public or go on the campaign trail, and his ability to win is enough to be questioned here, but Donald Trump is making a lot of the same mistakes and even crazier mistakes. I mean, remember Sharpie Gate? I don't know if that's just a bad decision-making capacity that's always been with him or if that's an age thing it's impossible to say but this conversation now has to be shifted uh, not only is it donald trump is not eligible because of his criminality because of his lack of decency because of his lack of respect for american democracy because he is the man leading the evangelical movement who cheated on his wife with a porn star while his wife was pregnant with their son baron and he's supposed to legislate the morality of other Americans from his high horse with the evangelical lobby, who is now think that now think after the fallout of the assassination that this man was personally chosen by God to lead the country. So we've got the spiritual mumbo jumbo being injected into our uh, into the agenda already, but now it's going to be turned up to eleven because they think he was that the bullet guide was guided by God. Apparently, God guided it into another person, though. Kind of confusing. Occurred but is occurred. There's a lot of thoughts popping through my head right now because I'm I'm finally accepting that Kamala Kamala Mania is coming. Kamala Mania is coming and it is and it is officially Jover. It is officially Jover. So I would say that this right now is a wild card. We have just decided that we're gonna roll the dice in the Democratic Party. We've taken the dice, we've and we're gonna roll it. That's what we're doing. Okay? The commencing is upon us, right? Now there's a few reasons why this is risky, and I, and I want to be upfront with them, okay? Because I see a lot of people that are excited, but let me tell you guys the downsides. Because I see a lot of people like super excited to have a nominee that isn't over eight, the years of 80, you know? But uh, number one, Kamala Harris is not the incumbent. Joe Biden is staying the incumbent. The incumbency bias is not going to be there for Kamala Harris. That's a disadvantage that she's taking. Kamala Harris has not been the center of Republican attacks for the last four years. The way that they've attacked Kamala Harris is by calling her a cackling idiot, by calling her a buffoon, that she's inexperienced, she's underqualified. That type of attack will not, that she's basically, and I'm, this is their attack, the DEI president. Now, that's not going to stand the test on the campaign trail, I think, because... I mean, she was the DA. She's got a long history in politics. I mean, she's 61 years old, and he spent a lot of that time in the political arena, uh, fighting with big banks, all sorts occurred of stuff. Is so I don't, I don't think that's going to stand the test New of time. New Yorker has donated five dollars. Biden has been done a great amount in such a short amount of time. He is the right man for the job, but arrived at the job ten years too late. Yes. He is the president that we needed, but well. Not I look, he was never my first pick for president, but it would have been much better if Biden was the nominee in 2016. It would have been much better. Hillary wouldn't have been the nominee, and she always had problems as a candidate. Joe Biden was connected to Obama. The whole country already knew about Joe Biden. If he would have run, ran in 2016, there's a good chance he would have beaten Trump, and maybe would have could have avoided a lot of the ebbs and flows of the MAGA movement. Uh, so I think that Joe Biden, unironically, I hate to agree with the president and his resentment of the rest of the party, but I do agree with it slightly. 
I mean, Hillary Clinton was almost like handpicked by Barack Obama. And the, Barack Obama liked Hillary. He thought she was experienced. She thought uh, He thought she had the skills needed to lead the country. And so the whole party kind of anointed Hillary Clinton and asked Joe Biden to stay out of it. And Bernie Sanders was just enough of a party outsider as an independent to say screw it and ran a against her. And the fact curd. that she had so many problems in the primary you do. was a warning. Keep up the good fight. Look, Biden was never my choice. But he would have probably won in 2016. Where, where, were, where was I? Oh, yeah, the disadvantages. So Kamala does not have incumbency by... Oh, yes, the attacks. The attacks on Kamala. So that ditzy image of Kamala that has been packed and made for the public, I don't think that's going to be the main avenue of attack. They're still going to go with DEI president. I think they're still going to go with that. I don't think it's going to work with independence, I think it's going to rile up their base. But it really just sounds racist from the very front of it. It, it's not going to work. I really don't think it will. Uh, so I don't know what they're going to do to attack her. I think that they might try to make her seem like an extremist. Uh, oh, she's a coastal elite from the coasts. You know, ooh, she was a she's more progressive than Biden. If you look at some of her policy proposals. Oh, she's the new crazy wave, crazy Kamala of radical ideas. That might be the way to go about it. DEI, that. But with the focus, with the spotlight on her. We're going to see a new wave of attacks. And so Kamala Harris as VP, while she has been attacked, she's been shielded from being the center of attention. Moving forward, she is going to be much of the center of attention of Republican attacks because she is the nominee. And how she performs under those attacks, how well those attacks land with the American public, we do not know. So I don't know how Kamala is going to perform under those attacks. On the other end of that, uh, Kamala Harris is also going to be the center of of the Democratic Party's push, they're going to start putting ads out about Kamala. Everybody in the country are about to are about to learn things about Kamala Harris that they've either forget forgotten since the Democratic primary or that they never heard before. Oh, she she was a cop. She's a cop, really. And Trump's a felon. Hmm. I wonder how that dynamic's going to play out with all the with people on Twitter, all the blue wave accounts, how they're going to spam that over and over and over again, taking out any ads saying. Let the cop deal with the criminal, you know? I don't know how those messages are going to play out because Kamala Harris was never front and center during the Biden administration. Even during her biggest foreign policy moment of the uh, of her presidency, uh, which was going to the Ukraine peace summit, the only reason she went was because Joe Biden couldn't go there himself because he had to go to a campaign fundraiser. I, w I will also say I do a tiny bit resent that. Uh, even if they told Zelensky in advance, I still a tiny bit resent that. I mean, come on. Largest war in Europe since World War II. I feel like the president should go himself. Either way, it was a good moment for her, though. But that didn't get really any coverage in the Western press. It didn't get any attention. And the other issues that Kamala was given, some people kind of paint it like she was almost saddled with it. Like she was given the issue of immigration. That was her big thing that she had to solve as vice president, which, gotta say, not an easy task under the current climate. So she hasn't really been front and center. So on one hand, we're going to see a lot more attacks against her. We're going to see how she fares against those attacks. We're going to see what Republicans can dig up. On the other hand, we're going to see the Democrats actually push her. So maybe if people start to learn more about her, that could affect the polling numbers that still have her down under Trump because there's some that has her up compared to Biden, but there's still allow a lot that have her down compared to Trump. Maybe those numbers can improve once the American public familiarizes themselves with Kamala Moore. I will also say that Kamala Harris being vice president, though, compared to someone like Gavin Newsom, Gretchen Whitmer, uh, J.B. Pretzker, Josh Shapiro. Sink is presidential candidate. Destiny is VP as a sign for unity. Dylan is foreign minister. Dylan is foreign minister. I don't... We... I hate to tell you this. Uh, we... we I, I feel what you meant to say was secretary of state. I don't believe we... The, the United States has a foreign minister, but... I appreciate the sentiment. The, the difference between Kamala Harris, Gretchen Whitmer, and a lot of these people, um, outside of the obvious institutional problems with having to move the money out of the campaign account, the $91 million Burns war chest that the Biden campaign has, corrupt, uh, outside of the fact that she won on a ticket of 14 million Democratic votes on the primary, and it was the Biden-Harris campaign, she was part of the ticket, was elected, Gretchen Whitmer and the rest of them, if they were chosen in an open convention, it would be with basically zero votes backing them up from the American people. They really wouldn't be 
the, the American public wouldn't have had a way to, you know, check in or like give their voice with a vote to choose any of them. Where Kamala Harris was the VP, when people voted for Biden, they voted with Biden knowing he was kind of an old guy, knowing that if something happened, she would take the reins over from him. That's the whole role of vice president. It was the Biden-Harris campaign. So she can claim not only that elected mandate, but she can also claim the mandate of the last four years in a way that Gretchen Whitmer and the rest of them cannot. She can say, hey, I was part of the Biden administration. So when you look at the CHIPS Act, when you look at the infrastructure bill, when you look at all these things, I can claim these victories to some degree. Gretchen Whitmer cannot nearly as much. Gretchen Whitmer can claim her own victories, but she cannot claim these victories. The rest of them cannot claim these victories. Not to mention, if you believe any of that 13 keys of the White House uh, stuff, uh, then the contest key is something that the author of that system has been complaining about all day now that Kamala Harris has been made the nominee. He doesn't want to knock down one more key. So if you believe in that stuff, I guess something to consider as well. So these other, and not to mention, like, again, Gavin Newsom, Gretchen Whitmer, and the rest of these people, they're not tested on the national stage. They're not. You guys remember, and I keep bringing this up every time we talk about this topic, I feel like a broken record, but I gotta hit this home for all the people trying to push Gretchen Whitmer, for all the people trying to push Gavin Newsom. Uh, Ron DeSantis was, from a legislative point of view, from a political ladder climbing point of view, in a pretty decent spot come his attempt to run for president in 2024. Uh, but then when he launched his campaign, despite his popularity amongst Republicans in Florida, his semi-popularity amongst knowledgeable Republicans across the country, immediately once he tried to run for president, he thought it fell flat on his face. He didn't connect with voters. Voters didn't connect with him. People stuck with Trump. He was already entering a pretty difficult political landscape because he would have to usurp Trump as the nominee. And Trump called him a kitty diddler uh, and said that he was doing weird things with his students. And that was the end of that. His polling numbers crashed. All the big donors that jumped onto his campaign early started jumping ship. And then he walked off the campaign trail uh, almost as soon as he jumped onto it. It feels like it retrospect, even though at the time it felt like it was dragging on and on and on. But that was mostly because it was hard to watch that dude try to wear cowboy boots at campaign stops, I guess. Now, the only reason I bring this up is if you take someone like Gavin Newsom, who does well in interviews, he does well in debates when he goes on Fox, who has been trying to push his name in other states by paying for campaign ads in a place like Florida to promote California and stuff like that, a uh, Gavin Newsom has not been tested on the national stage and the type of digging that opposition research, oppo research do into you when you're running for the national stage is different than the amount of oppo research that can be dedicated to you on the local stage. And let me tell you something, the Trump team love a good smear campaign. And so they're going to dig and they're going to dig and they're going to dig. And if it's possible to find, they will find it. That doesn't only apply to Gavin Newsom, that applies to every local state Democrat that did well on their state level, did well with their constituency, did well on the local level, but now wants to make the jump to president of the United States, which I gotta say, a it's a big jump. Great job, Dylan. Hey, thank you for the $10. Great job for what? What did I do? Did I make Biden drop out? Am I getting credit for that? Well, you're welcome, I guess. If he was listening to me, then I'm sorry, Mr. President. I'm sure it was my last video, which made me officially say, I think that would probably be smart if he dropped out. That did it. I was, I was the final straw. Kamala has the charisma of a potato. That's the thing. Kamala, this is a big concern I have about Kamala. And it's this concern that I also had about Hillary. She's not, I don't know how personable she can be on the campaign trail. And this is not something I have a measure for. Uh, and it's not just a concern I have for Hillary. Uh, it's a concern that you can have for uh, like a number of candidates that were running. Ron DeSantis is another one that had this problem. Um, Bill uh, uh, Bloomberg obviously had this problem too. Uh, there's a few policy wonks that have good like gubernatorial records that have ran that had the same issue. Just being able to connect with the whole country is not something that people exactly, you know, it's not, it's not an easy thing to do. It's you have to be, you got to do your best to be personable. There's not a clear guide to it. And so I don't really know what advice I can give Kamala outside of be friendly, be personable. And that's not really much advice whatsoever. But uh, I mean, it's it's going to be a problem because she has not had this amount of light on her before. And this is the moment where all the spotlights are going to come down on her. And every character flaw, every detail is going to be dissected.
We deserve another four years of Trump for being this stupid. Dems giving this election to Trump on a silver platter. We're doomed. It seems like you think that Biden dropping out is the end all be all. And let me let me throw something out there for you guys, because there's two camps of people in my chat right now. There's two camps of people on social media right now from the little bit I have been saying. There is the reborn Democrats. These are the Kamala maniacs, the coconut tree folk, you know, the 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 people who have been unburdened by what has been and are welcome and are welcoming to what can be or what can be, you know, and for those people, they're ecstatic right now because Kamala Harris is 61. And while that's not exactly spring chicken compared to 78 and 81, it does feel like a spring chicken. And Kamala Harris done come, does come off as much more youthful, much more vibrant. And even if she's not the best personable, like charismatic leader ever, uh, she's going to have a certain amount of youthful vigor that the other candidates don't when Donald Trump has fallen asleep at his nomination when his sons are speaking and Joe Biden is mixing up all the names as well as Donald Trump's mixing up all the names and Donald Trump being the oldest nominee ever. So I, I think that that age advantage is going to be beneficial. The fact that Democrats and Americans alike do want more options, do want a, seem to want a fresh face. Uh, even though Democrats were still divided over the issue of Biden dropping out, Americans wanted a different choice. We are rolling the dice on another choice. And rolling the dice uh, is better than somebody who's going to be scandaled for if they can even fulfill the next four years uh, in the next four months of campaign time. Uh, when you want to concentrate that campaign time on selling your agenda, selling your accomplishments and talking about the stakes of the election when the other party does not respect the electoral system for for which makes up the pillars of her entire democratic system kamala is 59 i thought oh i thought she was 61 she's 59 okay she's even younger than i thought again 59 78 donald trump's the oldest nominee for president ever now the dynamic can shift shift so now the question has to be and i do i saw stuff like this and this is how it needs to be this is how I, I think the question should be, if the media is fair, and if we have Democrats with any teeth, with any, with any a sharpness is a curd. in their tongue, this is the type of stuff we're going to see from the Kamala campaign. This is the type of stuff we're going to see from the, Demo uh, the Democratic campaign trying to get her elected right now. One second. Let me, let me bring this up on screen if I can get it. Here it is. Here it is. Because we have work to do. And so I'm going to be on the phone tonight calling delegates. Um, getting them, whipping them up, trying to get them on board for Kamala Harris. I don't think that's going to be a, a, a difficult task. Get anything else the vice president uh, needs to do, I'll be there. Because right now, Kamala Harris has her work cut out for her. She's running against the oldest uh, nominee for president of the United States in American history. And so when you have this type of change election, when you have this type of generational divide that you have, it's a question of whether or not you want to go backwards with Donald Trump or forward with Kamala Harris. I mean, the, the man is nearly 80 years old. And so the question is, can he serve another four years? I'm not sure he can. So a big difficulty of the Kamala Harris uh, campaign is going to be advertising the accomplishments, claiming the accomplishments of the Biden administration because she was VP and she was involved in it, even if it wasn't well advertised, uh, while also advertising a vision for progress and change because the whole reason Biden dropped out is because people didn't want Biden. They didn't think he was fit for office. The American people didn't think a that. A curd is a uh, curd. The American people also don't think Trump's fit for Biden office. Biden were worried about her potential character flaws when she's running against a rapist whose wife is missing and guilty of light treason. I mean, this is the pro- Hey, look, the standards have been lowered and lowered and lowered and lowered for Donald Trump. That has not been done for Kamala Harris. If a scandal was to come out tomorrow that Kamala Harris was cheating on her husband with like entire football teams, right? Which I mean, compared to, you know, actually engaging in sexual assault and rape, that's much worse. That's much more hor morally awful. Just due to the way the media operates, due to the way the smear campaigns operates, that would have like, I think a real demonstrable impact on the polls. Even if it was, even if compared to the horrible things Trump has been compared, uh, been hit with, it would mean nothing. It'd mean nothing. And so this is the period where they're going to dig, 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 dig for anything, uh, which would be even worse for any of these smaller candidates that we prop up to national status that there haven't been this type of digging in before. They've done that for Kamala. They haven't done it as much for the smaller gubernatorial candidates that we're talking about moving up to the national headlines. Trump inundates us with scandal after scandal. He faces no consequences and we are a boiled frog in regards to becoming desensitized. I agree to that. Absolutely. 
Absolutely agree to that. I mean, like D Donald Trump's son was talking about making Alex Jones press secretary and just, like talking about how much he's been correct on all these issues and how fantastic it is. And to be clear, Donald Trump talks about putting his kids in, go in government positions all the time and how he wanted to do it. He wanted to make Ivanka ambassador to the United Nations. She has no diplomatic experience. She has no clue what she would be doing. She doesn't know how the UN works. And she's going to be appointed as UN ambassador. Why? And why was she? St why was Donald Trump stopped from doing that? Because he had people around him, the quote unquote experts that we talked about during the first Trump administration when he was first being anointed as president of the United States. These experts that stopped him last time will not be in the room the second time around. It's going to be Trump Incorporated on the American flag. I, I genuinely believe this. I mean, even last time, Jared Kushner was in charge of the Middle East peace process. He tried to make Ivanka Trump UN ambassador. You don't think Eric Trump and Donald Trump might get positions as well? I mean, we just saw at the RNC, we had Donald Trump's grandchildren speaking on behalf of the man. I mean, the man if these people were not being given government positions, then I would not care. Like Hunter Biden doesn't really matter too much to me because Hunter Biden... He can smoke crack in an alleyway. If he's doing it away from the government, then it's not of my concern and it is not of the American public's concern. Alex Jones for press secretary, I'd vote for that. So many memes. I mean, it would be great to see Alex Jones as a hurricane approaches the shores of a state, just say there's no hurricane, the hurricane's a lie, and then thousands of people die. And people think like, I, people would say, oh, they're Dylan, you're exaggerating. Alex Jones did that on his show he told people that the intensity of a hurricane that was being advertised was not nearly as bad as it was and then he fled said hurricane as the viewers who were listening to him stayed behind like i don't know if that's the type of people you want to be promoting to to either the t uh the turning point usa conference where alex jones were promoted the son of the president of the united states being promoted alex jones the alex jonesification of the republican party has not been fun to watch pete Buttigieg for vp dei d's not shut up okay if, okay, if Kamala Harris is going to be the nominee, and, I, and I'm saying Kamala Harris, and the reason I'm talking about Kamala Harris is for me, for all the reasons I just talked about, I think it has to be Kamala uh, because of the money reasons, uh, but it's not just the money reasons, um, but it's it's also the just problem with pissing off the black constituency, which very much wants her to be the nominee, uh, the angering and the political infighting that would come with jumping over Kamala to going for somebody else, uh, the mandate that she got by being on the Biden-Harris ticket, uh, American public being generally already aware of Kamala Harris, we're bringing up any of these other candidates, will be more of rolling Burns the dice, even an if immoral, Kamala doesn't perform corrupt, bankrupt remarkably man. out like out of this world, even if she isn't giving the best polling po uh, performance against Donald Trump, uh, if she has less scandals that could be dug up, that's better. That's less unpredictability. It's easier to plan around. Uh, but for all of these reasons, I think that she basically had to be the nominee. You didn't want to anger a, a constituency that is very important for Democratic votes. You don't want to anger Kamala Harris and start this infighting and have a contest, a strongly contested primary this short out and have this uh, Joe Biden stepping down process uh, drag out into scandal after scandal. When again, the narrative of the campaign, the center of the campaign has to be the uneligibility of the other guy, not the chaos of the Democrats following a conversation about the uneligibility of Joe Biden to continue for another four years or to win a campaign, whichever you prefer, depending on your amount of partisanship. So Kamala Harris has to, when it comes to, so I, for me, she kind of almost has to be the nominee. It, it's not 100% has to, but it feels like she has to be the nominee. And Joe Biden's already endorsed Kamala Harris to be a nominee. Uh, my fellow Democrats, I've decided not to accept the nomination and to focus all my energies on my duties as president for the remainder of my term. My very first decision as the party nominee in 2020 was to pick Kamala Harris as my vice president, and it's been the best decision I've made. Today, I want to offer my full support and endorsement for Kamala Harris to be the nominee of our party this year. Democrats, it's time to come together and to beat Trump. Let's do this. And it's not just going to be Joe Biden. It's going to be Jim Clyburn as well, another very influential Democrat within the party. I've already seen Jamie Crockett. Uh, I think it was not Jamie Crockett, was it? Uh, uh, Miss Crockett. She's the one that really just slams hard in the committee hearings. 
Will somebody remind me of who, who I am speaking of? Because she was tweeting out too earlier today. She's a representative saying, if it's anybody other than Harris, good luck. Like they, they, they very dug in over the fact that it's going to be Kamala Harris and that, it, and she wasn't even happy about Joe Biden being replaced. But if it's anyone other than Kamala Harris, and it seemed like she was saying, you can count me out almost. But if there is an open convention, if there is an open convention, I think Kamala Harris will still nab it. She has Jim Clyburn support. She's got Biden support. There's a good chance that she's probably going to have the Obama camp support, possibly Hillary Clinton support as well. Uh, the less contested the primary, Democrats will probably feel better considering they're really nervous with how much risk we're taking right now. And the less risk you can enter into the situation, the better. So I, I think she not only is probably going to be the nominee, but I think that there's not many other options but her to be the nominee at this point with so little time. With so little time. People talk about Gretchen Whitmer. People talk about Gavin Newsom. But I mean, they've already have all, they have a bunch of different problems with lack of knowledge on it, lack of being known on the national stage, being unable to access the campaign funds and not being able to overcome the problems with Kamala Harris being overstepped. Not to mention these high profile endorsements rolling out. I think Kamala Harris in coconut mania is here to stay as the nominee. And even if it is an open convention, I think Kamala Harris will probably nab it. That was my prediction before uh, Joe Biden pricked, uh, dropped out if he was going to drop out, and that is still my prediction after now that Joe Biden has dropped out. Her, her name is Jasmine Crockett. Yeah, let me we can go look at her tweet so you can see that a lot of people are not super psyched about uh, about Joe Biden dropping out or the people who encourage Joe Biden to drop out because I see some of the Biden Biden's lowly lonely soldiers on the mountaintops to snow it's a blizzard they're cold they're shivering but they refuse to remove themselves from their post uh here's Jasmine Crockett uh well I hope the geniuses that push the most consequential president of our lifetime out have a plan who in the hell couldn't sell the MFing accomplishments and win over 34 time convicted felon who isn't even allowed to operate businesses in the state of New York and therefore should automatically be disallowed from running, say, the country? His entire team and his entire team is Project 2025. Joe wasn't the problem. Dems were. I know one thing. I will only work for Kamala Harris. If it's anyone other than her, enjoy campaign season. I hope all of my disenfranchised colleagues, disenchanted colleagues, are able to find some walking shoes and get to work because I will not. Full stop. So she's saying if it's anyone else than Kamala Harris, the Jasmine Crockett is not going to be out there campaigning hard. So this, this is... This has a threat of getting factional very, very quickly, depending on how an open convention goes, if it goes that way, as it went the way with, say, Hubert Humphrey. Kind of hammers more that Kamala should be the candidate. Biden has endorsed Kamala, according to the news report. Yeah, no, he's endorsed her. We just read the endorsement. Um, I haven't read Joe Biden's official, like, resignation. Like, I mean, resignation from being the nominee, which he wasn't even yet. So... Just him saying that he will not pursue the nominee and he's dropping out of the race while staying president. Let me read the uh, letter. Since it is a historic document, and I feel like, you know, we should respect it and read it. My fellow Americans, over the past three and a half years, we have made great progress as a nation. Today, America has the strongest economy in the world. Uh, so, I don't know if it's the strongest in the world. It certainly, I mean, I will say this. Of the G7 countries, we're dealing with the least inflation. Inflation was at like 20%. It's now down to like 3%. Uh, we're doing better than Germany when it comes to inflation. We're doing much better than the UK and a bunch of other countries. Our post-COVID recovery is going well. The CHIPS Act was a success. The infrastructure investment was a success. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, he also shrunk Trump's deficit. So, you know, he avoided the post-COVID recession that the economists talked about. So I do think he has some claim to that. Even if he didn't solve income inequality as his president uh, and the child tax credit was overturned due to Republican votes and a bunch of other problems with the administration, many of it be being due to either the filibuster and a lack of votes. Anyway, continuing. We've made historic investments in rebuilding our nation. 
and lowering prescription drug costs for seniors and expanding affordable health care to a record number of Americans. We've provided critically needed care to a million veterans exposed to toxic substances, passed the first gun safety law in 30 years, appointed the first African-American woman to the Supreme Court, and passed the most significant climate legislation in history of the world. America has never been better positioned to lead than we are today. I know none of this could be have could have been done without you, the American people. Together, we overcame a once in a century pandemic and the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression. We've protected and preserved our democracy, and we've revitalized and strengthened our alliances around the world. It has been the greatest honor of my life to serve as your president. And while it has been my intention to seek reelection, I believe it is in the best interest of my party and the country for me to stand down and to focus solely on fulfilling my duties as president for the remainder of my term. I will speak to the nation later this week in more details about my decision. This is not a lot of detail as to why he's deciding to drop out now versus earlier, um, whether it has to do with the drying up donor money that we're hearing rumors about, whether it has to do with the bombarding media attention to this issue that just does not seem to go away, whether it has to do with the polling numbers, which don't seem to be shifting too significantly, whether it has to do with Joe Biden doing media appearances that gets him through enough but not enough to smash the preconceptions that Americans have now built about him post the debate and even that we're building up pre-debate. So, I mean, this doesn't go into any of that detail, but he says here that he will speak about it later this week in more detail. For now, let me express my deepest gratitude for all of those who have worked so hard to see me reelected. I want to thank President, uh, Vice President Kamala Harris for being an extraordinary partner in all of this work. Again, they're centering Kamala Harris in the conversation. Kamala mania. And let me express my heartfelt appreciation to the American people for the faith and trust you have placed in me. I believe today what I always have, that there is nothing America can't do when we do it together. We just have to remember we are the United States of America. Joe Biden. This election is kind of hard to say. I don't like to do alternative history. But this decision from Joe Biden could end up going a few ways. Um, the optimistic approach is that this is, and I think that this is the intention at the very least, that Joe Biden is dropping out because he is not confident and either due to media, all the factors we already talked about, and his ability to win and others, the donors, and many of the people needed to make the team run are not as confident in his ability to win as the post-debate sludge continued. And so... With him now 81, the oldest president in history, having fulfilled one term, beat Donald Trump before, he, after being encouraged in 2016 by Barack Obama to drop out and allow Hillary to be the nominee. Burns is an immoral, morally corrupt bank. Hey, Faceless, thank you for the tier one sub and the 55-month streak. Man, you've been supporting me for a while. I appreciate it. Uh, Joe Biden is now under pressure again by his colleagues to drop out, dropping out and passing the torch for the good of the Democratic Party, for the good of our chances to win in November, and ultimately for the good of the country, which will help preserve and protect his legacy, as well as, of course, our chances of beating Donald Trump in November. That's the optimistic way of looking at this, and it's something that I think could end up helping his legacy. I saw some people talking about, yeah, he's going to go down. I think it was Bill de Blasio. He's going to go down like the other great Democrats who sacrificed uh, the nomination for the country and then gave the example of LBJ because he gave it up to Hubert Humphrey. But the problem is Hubert Humphrey lost. Hubert Humphrey lost when LBJ passed over the torch. So that comparison kind of worries me a little bit. And that brings me, and of course there was a lot of factors of that. The Vietnam war was going down uh, LBJ had quickly saw his support plummeting. He was in the thirties. He, he had health problems as well. That was going to rear his ugly head and would end up uh, ending his life. Not short, uh, shortly after he resigned from president, just like, I think it was like three, four or five years later. So there are, there are some correlates and there's some other thing correlates that just don't work, but this has the other route of going. And that is, Joe Biden drops out. We lose the incumbency bias. We we lose the fact that this guy did beat Donald Trump before, and the nation is more familiar with him. 
and then there's a new round of attacks on Kamala Harris as the nominee, or the content, or the convention is very much contested, and we have people like Jasmine Crockett and others uh, not wanting to participate much in getting, say, Gavin Newsom elected, or causes a lot of tension in the party, causes a lot of party chaos, and then for whatever reason, a, a multitude of factors, whether maybe Lickman was right in the 13 keys or gospel, and then Kamala Harris doesn't win, or whoever the other nominee doesn't win. And how would this decision be reflected upon that? Well, on one hand, you could take the view, the pessimistic view that maybe if Joe Biden would have stayed in and he kept the incumbency by it and he was true to Alan Lickman's predictions and you stayed with the guy who beat Donald Trump once, then maybe he would beat him again. All you had to do was have faith. Give Joe Biden the, enough time to show that grandpa chic to the voters. Do more voter interactions, eating ice cream, and he could have won. But then again, and this is very much true, it could be that Joe Biden would have lost. And because of just how this campaign is and how, how late this dropout is and how who we're nominating has not been tested at this level before, with definitely without a primary, Joe Biden had to win a primary before becoming the nominee. Kamala Harris lost a primary and now is the nominee for president of the United States. If Kamala Harris lost anyway, or whoever the replacement was, it could just be that Joe Biden wanted to give us the best shot possible and it still wasn't enough due to the circumstances. Or it could be that, you know, maybe he would have won, but I don't know. It's saying that at this point, uh, under this climate, is very hard to say. I'm not going to look into the future. And so all I have to say right now is history is rolling the dice and we're still waiting to see if it's snake eyes or we got two sixes, man. I feel like most people worries were it's either a lunatic or a dead guy. Now that it's a lunatic versus Kamala Harris, that makes me feel a little better about her odds. The problem is that that's not framing that the Republican Party is going to accept. That's framing that you have and I have. Kamala Harris is not my first pick. She is not my second pick. She is not my third pick. She is the vice president of the United States. She was picked by Joe Biden. She is the nominee, but she still leaps and bounds better than Trump in every single category. But that's my perspective. That's not necessarily the perspective of most Americans. That's the perspective of you guys in my chat who are here to listen to me, suggesting that you guys probably agree with me. Because the Republicans are going to, I think, going to try to promote her as crazy Kamala. Crazy Kamala. Crazy Kamala coming here with her, with her West Coast communism to America. She's going to DEI America. Kami Kamala, exactly. Because again, I do not think the ditzy stuff is going to hold up because she ain't ditzy. She, she can like appear ditzy at times with the cackling and stuff like that. But I mean, that doesn't mean she's ditzy. That means she's trying to be personable and maybe trying a little too much. Okay, let me look at chat. Okay, I've, now that I've gone off for an hour, I want your guys' opinions before we talk about other people's opinions about this dropout. Uh, if you guys want to know if I think it was the right call, uh, at this point, yes. I do think it was the right call. I said this in the last video. Uh, I wanted, I said this a few weeks ago, actually. I wanted to wait. I wanted to wait after the debates because people were calling for him to drop out right away. And I was like, why do we need to call for him to drop out right away? We can wait for the polling number numbers to call in. We can see how the donors react. We can just wait and wait and wait because I know the last day until the nomination, the last day before you can't like wait any longer with the nomination and who we're picking to be the nominee would be uh, August 7th because that's when you have to register in the state of Ohio, the state of Ohio. So I knew that we had time. So I waited for the polling numbers to come in. I waited for the donors and what they were saying to come in. I waited to see how the media was generally gonna react. I was, I was waiting for favorability polling. I was waiting for all these things. And the more that they came back and I was waiting for Biden just to do more media appearances to see you know, if it really was just a layover. And he did do better. He did better at the NAACP speech. He did better in the speech in North Carolina, literally right after the debate. He did some interviews. I mean, like some of his answers to the Lester Holt question, I think most of them were very good, even though there were some slippy slip ups, but it was never enough to shake, shake the image of Biden. And when we have 76% of Americans saying that he, they're, they're worried about his mental fitness going into the job and 50 to over just over 50% saying the same thing for Donald Trump. That's a problem. That is a problem. Now, whether or not trading that disadvantage for someone like Kamala Harris, who hasn't been tested on this level before, and that was the right call, I don't know for sure. But 
if I was to play my odds, if I was to look at the gamble, because this is a gamble, this is a political risk, I would roll that roulette table. I'd roll that roulette table with crazy Kamala, put a coconut in there instead of a little ball, and see if it lands on the spot I need. At this point, after having waited and given, and I gave Joe Biden a fair shake. Nobody can tell me I didn't give Joe Biden a fair shake. I, I talked about every advantage of keeping him in the race. I, I talked about Scranton Joe with, with nothing but uh, looking at him as a device to either win or not win the presidency. I didn't attach any pri prior animus or favoritism to it, but I gave him a fair shake. I let him do some more campaign stops. I examined it. I looked at the polling data, but then when I heard from one of his biggest donation bundlers that the donations were drying up and they wanted another nominee, that's when I felt that tinge in my chest, that feeling in my chest that I, 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 I was like, ah, no, because Joe Biden, I could like him having a bull, a polling slump for a little bit. That's one thing. Joe Biden, you know, him messing up one interview is one thing. Once the donors scurry off as well. When one of the main advantages Joe Biden had going into this and Democrats going into this was that the RNC was in financial chaos. It was. Like at the start of this year, the RNC was in financial chaos under Ron and McDaniel. And then there was the Trump coup, the MAGA coup. Ron McDaniel was kicked out. It was, she was replaced with Laura Trump. She was replaced with Trump's daughter-in-law. And uh, Trump's daughter-in-law then went and went on a cutting spree, cutting staff, cutting expenses, cutting minority outreach programs, while the DNC was seeing good fundraising. Joe Biden's campaign was seeing really good fundraising. And if that advantage, which was stark at the start of the year, starts to dry up, I mean, that's 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 the type of establishment, like, like, like elbow bumping that should not be a problem for the Biden campaign with so much experience, with so much experience on Capitol Hill, and with so many uh, connections on Capitol Hill, including fundraising connections. Even if Joe Biden wasn't necessarily always the wealthiest man in Congress, I think at one point literally being one of the least wealthy men in Congress, he, he has enough experience in the area and his bundlers have enough experience in the area that they shouldn't have problems calling people. But those donors, those donors from these, those billionaire donors, those investor donors, those, uh, uh, what, whoever you want to talk, whichever ones you want to talk about. Most of them didn't seem to be too excited about the prospect of replacing Biden with Kamala. They were, as I am, uh, suspicious or nervous about her chances in the general election. They seemed to want somebody a lot more from the Midwest, somebody from Michigan, somebody like a, like a Josh Shapiro, maybe, or a Gretchen Whitmer, uh, maybe a Sherrod Brown, a J.B. Pretzker, mind you. See how Dylan didn't answer me? Harris is cooked. I don't know what that means. Eric the Red, will you be home for the election? Uh, or are you going to be voting absentee? Um, I'm going to be home for some time before the election. And in that time, I'm going to fill out my vote. 